Hey everybody, it's Ultratrunk64. So sometimes when I come across a ROM hack, it's really cool, but it's simple. And simple ROM hacks don't give you a lot to talk about. So you can't really dedicate a whole video to it. So I, I passed up on doing some videos on ROM hacks just because there was not enough to talk about for like a full length video. But then I thought, why not take a bunch of them and put them in one video? And that way, I'll have the length that I want, and I can still talk about these games that I find really cool. So this video is about a bunch of cool, simple ROM hacks that I think you should check out. So let's get right into it. Up first is a ROM hack for Super Mario Bros. 3. Whenever I would play this game, I would always wish it had one of the big features from Super Mario World, which is the extra item slot during gameplay. But this ROM hack, that is now possible. It works a little differently than it does in Super Mario World though. In Super Mario World, when you got hit and had an extra item in the item slot, it would drop down immediately from the top of the screen. This wasn't always a good thing because you could have currently been in a spot full of hazards, which you couldn't afford to wait around for the item to reach you, causing you to miss it. In this ROM hack, if you have an extra item, you can simply press select and you will switch to that power up, and the previous power up you were using before will now go into the item slot instead and you can switch back and forth between them as much as you like. Sometimes you may want to use the fire flower, and other times you may need to use the tanuki suit. This gives you more flexibility in the gameplay department, and gives you more mercy in making mistakes in this game. This is a very simple but effective ROM hack. Beyond what it does, I love that you can add it on top of other Super Mario Bros. 3 ROM hacks. The catch is, though, that it won't work in every single ROM hack. It's something you must try in a ROM hack to ROM hack basis. It's kind of complicated to explain, so I will describe it in more detail in the video description. Up next is a ROM hack for the game Felix the Cat for the NES. If you take a look at the original game, you will notice that the colors are dark and the lighting is very dim. Which it shouldn't be because it's a kid-friendly platformer. So this ROM hack addresses that. It simply gets rid of the code that makes the picture so dim. That's it. That's all it does. As you can see, with the original on the left hand side and the ROM hack on the right, the difference is night and day. Now it looks like the bright and colorful platformer that it should be. Sometimes a simple change can make a huge difference, and this ROM hack is a good example of that. There are so many Super Mario 64 ROM hacks that I could probably dedicate a whole series to just them alone. But I'm going to pick a Super Mario 64 ROM hack that is really simple because I find it fascinating. In Super Mario 64, whenever you get burned, there is a trail of black garbage pixels that follow behind you for a few moments. You probably never thought much of it because it looked like something that was naturally supposed to be there. But what if I told you that it wasn't? Very recently, it has been discovered that this texture was actually supposed to look much different in-game. But because the game displayed Mario's on-fire texture in the wrong format, it resulted in the game instead displaying the pixelated black garbage trail we've been seeing for years. This ROM hack fixes this air by displaying the texture correctly as a proper transparent smoke. The texture has been inside the ROM all this time, it just needed to be coated properly. This ROM hack also includes the O2 compression that reduces the lag in Super Mario 64. I personally never really noticed lag in this game, besides when you're on the Bowser sub, but this is still a really neat addition to the ROM hack. This next ROM hack is called Donkey Kong Country Boss Blitz. I like that they put all the bosses on the title screen. Before you begin the game, you get to pick the settings you want to apply. You can choose if you want to start a round as DK or Diddy, and if you want to have both of them available for the boss fight, or only one of them. You can choose to see how much overall time you are taking during the boss fights with the stopwatch display. And lastly, you can choose what color you want DK and Diddy to be. I really like the color options here, and the most unique one for sure is the Game Boy style. So as you can see, this is a boss rush ROM hack. You are taking every boss in Donkey Kong Country on one after the other. If you fail, there's no continuing at the boss you just died at. There's no checkpoints. You have to start over from the beginning again. The bosses vary in difficulty. Their patterns are very easy to pick up on and if you execute well, you should be able to beat them fairly easily. But that's the thing, even though it's easy to know what you have to do to win, you can still fail. If you lose your focus or make a mistake, you can be done for. It can be really addicting. I thought I would just play enough to get the amount of footage I needed for the video, but there's something about losing this ROM hack that just pisses you off. I can't tell you how many times I cursed when I died while playing this ROM hack. Getting the K rule and dying when he had one hit left is a terrible feeling. Then knowing he had to start all over after that, ugh. 
but I was determined to beat him, and I eventually did. After you beat K. Rule, you will see how much time it took you to beat each boss, and the total time it took you to beat all of them. You could be addicted to getting the very best possible time, but just beating K. Rule was good enough for me. The last round hack for this video is my favorite of the bunch. It's called Mario Kart 64 Hot Potato Battle. You start off immediately at the options screen. This ROM hack lets you customize how you like to play the battle mode. HP is how much health you have. The countdown I will explain in a little bit. Star items are the stars, ghost items are the ghosts. Infinite G shells is being able to use as many green shells as you like without any limits. Flat courses make all the battle arenas completely flat. Auto items let you get a new power up every couple seconds when you don't have one. You should definitely turn this on if you have flat courses turned on. Widescreen is great if you're playing on a modern TV. Disable AA turns off anti-aliasing. This actually raises the frame rate in the game so it's great to have on at all times. 3P slash 4P music turns on the music when there are 3 or 4 players playing. And same characters is self-explanatory. So how the countdown timer works is when you get hit with an item, you become dark and smoke comes out of your cart. When this happens, the countdown timer begins. The player who hit you will start running away from you because if you hit them back, the darkness will leave you and come to them instead. When the timer runs out, the player who is currently infected with the darkness will lose a health point. When you lose all your health points, the game is over. With two players, it's much harder to come back and hit your opponents, since most of the battle arenas are really big. So this type of mode fits a lot better for three or four players than two players. Since you have so many options with how you like to customize the game, you get to experiment and find out what works well and is most fun to play. I want to show you a couple of options, what they're like in game when you turn them on. I was saying that this type of mode works better with 3 or 4 players, but if you have the right type of item turned on, it can work well with 2 players. The infinite green shells is probably my favorite option in the entire ROM hack. It's so chaotic having a never ending supply of green shells to shoot, and when you are in a closed section, they bounce off the walls non-stop, so someone will get hit eventually. Because of this, it's way easier to trade blows, and you will laugh at how back and forth these exchanges become. No one is safe when an endless supply of green shells are around the corner. So next I'm going to show you what a battle arena looks like when it's flat. It's a way different experience than before. And this is why it's important to have auto items on when you select flat arenas. Because item boxes are nowhere to be seen. You can actually fall into the pits when you are on a flat level so you need to watch your step at all times. I want to show you what happens when you select Big Donut as a flat arena. Look at this. The camera becomes all messed up. It zooms out and has this weird top-down perspective. None of the other levels have this issue. Only Big Donut does. Let me tell you, it's really hard to see where you're going when the camera is like this. Falling into pits will happen, even if you are being careful. Despite these issues, it can still really be fun. You might be wondering, what happens if you set the countdown clock to zero? Well, it basically just becomes a traditional balloon battle then. This setting plus the infinite green shells is probably my favorite setting combination you can do. Make sure you raise the amount of HP though, or the match will be over really fast. And with that, this concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. This was Ultra Junkie 64. See you next time.